Yeah, he was a good start to finish. I actually thought like his cutter was as good as it's been. He had a number of punch outs with his cutter today. And that's, uh, I think, the first couple innings of the game in Arizona where he uh, scuffled a little bit. He got away from his cutter entirely. And then later in that game, we introduced it and was uh, much more effective. So that's a pitch that probably goes unnoticed because his curveball is so good. But uh, I know he got a number of punch outs with it tonight, and he looked good. I'd like to say, like, I called that. I knew exactly what was going on. Uh, not at all. Uh, there's there's actually that moment of anxiety because you got Drew Pomeranz at the plate, and you nobody's told him not to swing the bat. So uh, when he came home, uh, I was just glad Drew didn't swing. And uh, heck of a slide, huh? Almost matrix, Matrix-esque. Yeah, there's tons of athleticism there, and uh, you know it's uh, it's one of those plays. It's incredibly smart when it works out, uh, and uh, it was really well executed on his part. And uh, happy Drew didn't swing. Uh, Melvin's done everything we could possibly ask him from the beginning of the year to this point in time, and couldn't be more uh, happy with his effort every day. You know, he's out there today, doesn't get a hit, but walks, uh, gets in motion when Dino hits the ball through the four hole, and then scores on the steal. So uh, caused uh, caused things to happen. Uh, it, the, the steal home, yeah, I think uh, Glenn Hoffman was as terrified as I was at that point in time. He thought somebody ran on the field, I think he told me. Uh, so he, uh, he he might try to give credit elsewhere, but none of us deserve it. He's fine. He got that off his foot. Uh, he's never as fast as Travis Jankowski, and when he's running on one foot, it's uh, he hit his ankle bone. He's not nearly as fast as himself normally, which is kind of scary. Uh, it's not his strong suit, so... Uh, getting him out of there, Travis stole a base, put some pressure on him, gave us an opportunity to score again, and uh, he'll. I, I think he'll be fine for tomorrow. But just was the right thing to do at that point in time. Yeah, longest home run in Petco, huh? May not add a foot to it. And really had to tie it, huh? Yeah, it's a game of inches. I, mean, I think he's had a few outings like this. This isn't the anomaly here. The anomaly was the last outing in Arizona where he didn't work deep into the game. Uh, you know, everybody always – there's errors behind guys in time, but you look up and the, the error early in the game cost him probably 11 pitches, cost him the opportunity probably to go eight instead of just seven. Uh, but it was a very strong seven shot out, executed well the whole time. Uh, you know – Booked it right now for the time being. I mean, he's done back-to-back days now. And he threw 34 pitches yesterday. But for the time being, he'll probably be the primary setup guy for Rodney. And uh, we'll go that route for the time being. And, you know, get the four-run lead and looking for a, a guy you trust who's been reliable. And that was Villa. Uh, without a doubt, that's what you need from your guys that are near the top of your rotation. And our guys uh, – Needed a rest down there to only use two guys tonight and get two shutout innings after yesterday. Uh, was very good, so it, it was sorely needed. Uh, it's pretty exciting to me. I mean, like it's probably the only thing that like panics me when I see my player that's valuable to the team flying down the line. And I got a pitcher that pretty much swings at every pitch that's thrown. So. Uh, the, the panic uh, raises the excitement level. Evidently, the front office knew what they were doing at 7.40 start times. So uh, I guess we uh, do well late at night. <laughs>